What? It can't be Friday already! I think I love retro games I think I love retro games I think I love retro games I love the retro games show I think It's the Retro Game Show. <laughs> it looks a bit like a mushroom. Oh, yeah. The Retro Game Show. Wake up then. Hello, it is me. It is Jace at Retro Games. You know who I am by now. Here we are, episode four of the Retro Games Show. <laughs> I know. I, I get excited. I get excited about that intro. Just excited. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back on the TV. I'm back, filling up your weekend with crud. Uh, and that's what I like to do. Now, what a funny week we've had this week. <laughs> it's funny that I'm doing this weekly um, because we kind of like, we're all tied up with what's going on. You know, mortgage prices have gone mental this week in the UK. Um, <laughs> it's a bit on the DL. Uh, I like Gordon Brown. What about you? Uh, Theresa May, she was okay. Uh, she was okay. But I'm not gonna get political. We're gonna talk about game stuff. Now, what have I got to talk about games this week? Well, what a plum. Not, not a lot. As it goes, those looking at the site a lot will say, oh, you haven't listed much this week. We'll come on to that. We'll come on to that. Um, but Retro Games has been as busy as ever. Um, but first, let's go straight into our feature. It's a bit of a special feature. It's a bit more self-indulgence because it's what you're used to. Uh, come on then. Change your T-shirt. Thanks, Jace. In the kit this time around, the blast from the past as we talk to the Games Master in a shop who lives life living in the past. Those games from the 80s laughed at, I mean looked at, very soon. So, I've got a bit of history stuff to show you. And the first thing I thought you might like to hear, you might not, just skip it, you know the rules, just skip this bit if you don't like it, uh, is I did a Radio 1 interview. And it was around the time of the Retro Games exhibition at HMV in London, so 1996. Um, I got loads and I was in loads of newspapers. I did magazines from everything from the Guardian, Daily Mail, uh, the Mirror, the Telegraph. Um, yeah, I was everywhere. I was everywhere for a bit. I was on standby to go on Big Breakfast. I didn't get on the Big Breakfast. I really wish I had. I could have met uh, Chris Evans. I think it was Chris. It might have been Johnny Vaughan back then. It might have been. But I didn't. I didn't. I <laughs> bought a new jumper especially. I did not get put on the show. I got cancelled at the last minute despite getting up incredibly early. Anyway, apart from that, um, I got interviewed by Radio 5. Now Radio 5 did a tour of the show with me doing a bit of a narration um, and telling them about all about the consoles, which is kind of what people like me to do. Um, but Radio 1, they just wanted me to answer some questions. So I thought, okay, let's play it back and see how it feels listening back to it now. Go on to the Radio 1 website www.bbc.co.uk slash radio The history of computer games starts in the late 70s and early 80s with stunners like Pong and Defender. With the original hardcore fans all now in their 20s and 30s, the time is right for a flood of digital nostalgia and the shelves are filling up with re-releases of console and arcade classics. The retro gaming exhibition, Back to 8-Bit, brought all the old gamers out of their bedrooms. I think they're wonderful. I mean, as soon as you work out the rules, they're just so addictive. There's something about standing here with lots of people and actually playing the old machine. You just sort of, you get more of a kick out of it. Jason Moore is a vintage video game collector and editor of Retro Games magazine. In the 80s, people were playing very basic games. Pac-Man, Space Invaders, Defender, Joust. On 8-Bit computers and consoles like the Commodore 64, Atari 2600, and the rather more obscure and highly prized Pseudo 3D Vectrex. Consoles 5% as powerful as today's super machines. I think the appeal of retro gaming for many people comes down to nostalgia. 
Back in 1981, computers were aimed at children. Um, the ZX81s came into school where I was, and that's why I wanted to get one for myself. 20-somethings getting sentimental about playing Space Invaders in school lunch hour. Original old-school Game Boy and TV presenter Dominic Diamond. These games are good, but not nearly as good as everyone says they are. I played them at the time, and today's games are much better. They look like... A work of art. Some people like to kind of pretend that video games are some kind of art form and some kind of culture. When it's not, it's disposable leisure. They look really kitsch. They look really 70s. There's a bit of an 80s revival anyway. I know several collectors who want machines to look as awful as they can. So, whether video games are for 8-bit art collectors or those of us on a fleeting nostalgia trip, the pull of decent thumb candy lives on. While manufacturers are still making new machines and still making new games, there's always going to be a revival of those particular games and machines 10 years on. If you look at the current machines, Machines now, like the Virtual Boy, the um, Sega Nomad, the quirky original machines, and I think, you know, 10, 15 years' time, they're going to be exactly the same position as the Virtual is now. The update on Radio 1. It's Ouch! So there you have it. <clears throat> that was me in 1996 talking on Radio 1. And as someone who grew up with Radio 1, it was a big thing for me to be on there. Unfortunately, I do say some very embarrassing things like. People want machines to look as awful as possible. <laughs> Maybe I do. Um, and also games are like art. And then Dominic Diamond just basically slagging me off. He's basically slagging me off instantly. As soon as I say something, he says the opposite because he hates me. Uh, that's fine. He cut my interview from Games Master. What can I say? Um, there's a bit of a story. When he interviewed me on Games Master, he was going to say, oh, you don't really love the Spectrum, do you? He was going to hold up a Spectrum and say, you don't really love the Spectrum. And what they wanted me to do was to pass out and fall on the floor with shock of seeing a spectrum. I don't know why, uh, but I refused to do it and I think that's why it got cancelled. Even then, I had more credibility than I've got now. I'd do anything now. I'll fall off the chair for you guys. You know I would. Anyway, that was the one thing that I found. Uh, but the, the most important thing, this is an interview that I did on the BBC. Yes, it was a programme called The Kit uh, it's from 1999, and it was hosted by the the one and only Charlie Brooker. Um, we all know him now for writing Black Mirror. He's super, super famous, screen wipe and all that stuff. Really, really funny guy. Um, what did he think of me when he met me? Have you ever found yourself seated at a dinner party next to somebody you really didn't even want to be near? Someone who mumbles and groans and bangs on and on and on in increasingly monosyllabic tones about boring stuff, you know what I mean? I've gone off him a bit. Anyway, uh, let's get to the actual interview. This is in 1999, space 1999, um, the BBC came to my shop, uh, prepare for some embarrassment. This is me uh, 23 years ago. Roll VT! It's a Spectrum Plus, isn't that lovely? Uh, or even this, the original. Oh, little Spectrum, normal little Spectrum with the rubber key, isn't that lovely? Well, it's actually, it might be lovely, but it's 300 times less powerful than that powerful PC I showed you at the start. It's got 48K of RAM, which is like let a fraction of what you can fit on a floppy disk even. It took programs loaded on audio cassette like this, and you had to wait for ages while, they, while you played them out of a scrawny old tape recorder like that. Horrible. Um, but some people like still really love these things, so what's the deal with them? We took a retrospective trip down the yellow chip road to find out. Do you remember the 80s, bad hairstyling, people trying to take themselves seriously in the most outrageous costumes, and my personal favorite, Doctor Who? But something called the video games industry also emerged at the same time to the delight of some very impressionable kids. Here at Retro Games in North London, we went back to the future to talk with Jason Moore, a man whose business and passion is dealing in electronic antiquity. I think there are really two kinds of collectors. Um, the first sort are kind of completists, they want to get every single game ever made. But then there's the second sort who are really just looking for certain times of specials then. Remember times that are related to the game. I mean, the same as you get a record and it reminds you of a certain time. I think games hold that nostalgia value as well. Forget today's limited formats, the 80s had a huge number of home computers with literally thousands of games, most of them taking minutes to load from flimsy audio cassettes. 
consoles were just as varied, from the wood-styled Atari VCS to the plasticky Philips video pack. But when it comes to plug-and-play, Jason's favorite is the granddaddy console of them all, released in 1972. This is the Magnavox Odyssey. It's the world's first ever console. So at the same time, it's set loads of sound. It's the first ever joypad and the first ever cartridge. It's just lovely. Gaming became truly popular when it went mobile. The Japanese excelled at handhelds long before Game Boy's beats were born. I have a, a big passion for handheld games. The LED tabletops and the LCD handhelds. I mean, it's kind of fun how they tried to replicate what was happening in the arcades with Space Invaders and, and try and just make it out of cogs and plastic. It's amazing what grown men can get excited about, but take a step back and you realize that all this stuff is actually an important bit of history. Still, anyone this dedicated to technology brings a certain piece of clothing to mind. No, I'd call myself a serious gamer. I wouldn't call myself an anime. <laughs> I'm going to stick to that. <laughs> Oh, blast from the past. I hope you enjoyed that. A bit humiliating for me, but I thought, great to be out there. Great to find the old VHS and get it on the system, get it on the show. I'm going to stop doing any more history stuff. This is the final bit. Just thought you'd like to see the show. And uh, and just to know that Charlie Brooker pretends that he uh, doesn't like retro stuff then, but then he writes Bandersma Bandersnatch uh, Extended um, Black Mirror, which was all about the classic Spectrum game. He is an Im as embedded in retro gaming as all of us. Uh, so come on, Charlie. Come on the show now and to put it straight, put it straight. Take the mick out of the Spectrum. Bloody cheek. Thanks, Jace. <laughs> I love that guy. He's funny, isn't he? Uh, but he's also a bit of a knob. Um, anyway, let's go. We, we like to do that normal thing where we look at all the new listed stuff on the site and I don't know if you've been looking at the site this week but we have been mentally busy not, not mentally busy mentally busy means we're thinking too hard and we're going a bit whack uh, no we have been incredibly busy it's been a crazy I think it was th that classic uh, you know where payday meets new listings uh, so we were epically busy I mean brilliant hundreds of parcels going out uh, but it has meant that we haven't had as much time to test and list all the great, fabulous stuff we've got heading for the site this week. So you might see, we have listed, but it's mainly Bowie Basements, magazine stuff, um, some more Dragon 32. And I thought, well, do we really want me to carry on uh, talking about the Dragon 32? No, I'm not going to. I'm going to. No, then. That's what I'm talking about. I'm going to, but not, but not, but not, not two weeks in a row. Let's not do Dragon two weeks in a row. Um, so I thought, well, what can I do? Because... We all like looking at stuff. And the thing about retro games is, yeah, sure, every week I'm looking at the latest listings on the site. But that doesn't mean the site's not already full of amazing stuff. Even more amazing stuff. Amazing stuff ten times better, really, than just picking what's coming this week. So I've picked 20 items. 20 items that are in stock from the retro game site for this slightly altered feature. What's not not on the new retro games this week? Not! Not! <laughs> I'm going to do it one more time because I quite enjoyed it. Not! <laughs> What's not new at retro games this week? Now, I thought I would pick 20 items. So 20, it's not going to overrun. It's going to be quite okay. Um, don't worry, there is some electronic games I'm going to play. I know you guys love to see me playing electronic games, uh, especially after last week's amazing battle on Galaxy Invader 1000. That's in episode three, if you haven't watched that. Um, let's start. Let's start with something different. I've picked multiple formats. I should, shouldn't I? And that is this. Mr. Basic meet, meets Bits and Bites. And this is an educational game. Uh, it's an educational game. It's in a lovely plastic thing. I'm going to, I'm going to take it out. This is for the uh, Mattel in television, and we haven't covered in television in the Retro Games show. I'm not sure we did it on the uh, What's New Retro Games this week either. <clears throat> this is a very rare game. Um, there was quite a bit of educational stuff came out for the Intellivision. Now, the Intellivision is a Mattel a bit crazy. Uh, they made a console, the Intellivision, massive rival to the Atari VCS, um, but they wanted it to become a computer. <laughs> they released a keyboard for it. They released uh, an expansion, they released 
A bit, I mean, ColecoVision did the same with the Coleco Adam system. All these guys fighting all that all that battle from the Spectrum and the Commodore and the Atari 800. They're all battling against the consoles. So the consoles are thinking, we we can do that. We've got the same internals. We can, we can turn ourselves into computers. So they released all these weird, weird gadgets. Like I mean, very rare, the Intellivision keyboard. I know you want to see what the Intellivision keyboard looks like. It looks like this. Yeah, I mean, it's a keyboard. I mean, <laughs> it's a bit weird. They basically made a range of games you can only use with the keyboard for a games console. And let's be honest, who wants to buy an extra peripheral for their games console just to play a game? Nothing about PlayStation Move! <laughs> no, PlayStation Move was different. Nothing about Connect! No, Connect was different. They were they expanded in a new way. Um, but a keyboard, mm, you know. Uh, let's have a look at it. Let's get the game out. Let's get the game out. Oh, oh, now you see that manual's unusual. It's ring bound. Uh, oh, there we've got the screen. Look at the screens on this, look. They are still... The screens are connected! They, they connect... They're not the right... Yes, they are. Mr. Basic meets Vampire Bats. There's like mini games in this, so... We've got a whole range and they're absolutely perfect. Uh, oh, I've got two of them on there. Oh no, that's just like a little save. That sheet stops it getting messed up. Uh, and another one, so they've got six inlays. That's one for each controller and they're still... They've never been used. Still connected. Uh, beautiful manual. Let's say, I'll show you the cartridge. I mean, in television, we've got a few in television collectors. Um, that's like, you've got the brochure there. We love the brochure. Uh, oh, it's got lots of, it got the voice synthesis module. I mean, they, they made the voice synthesis module for the television, but they didn't mean you had to have it. You can play those games uh, without having to have the thing plugged in, just won't talk to you. So they could make peripherals you didn't need. But unfortunately for the keyboard stuff, you did need it. Uh, anyway, yeah, so you've got a lot of space. These are all the standards. Uh, Tron 2, not called Tron 2 in the end. It was called Tron Deadly Discs. Uh, Lock and Chase Sub Hunt there. Uh, I love all these. I love, look at the artwork. Oh, these beautiful artwork. There's a dra I mean, nobody's getting the recognition they deserve for doing that just in the middle of a brochure, are they? Uh, and look at these two. Frogs from Frog Bog, one of my favourite names of a game. Frog Bog. <laughs> Bog Frog would be better because then you could actually have him living in a toilet. Uh, then we've got uh, Triple Action, NFL, uh, uh, lots of sports guys. I love the way they do this. Nobody's making pictures like this anymore, are they? With uh, like sports guys with moustaches. And that kind of style, it's such a 70s, 80s style. I love it. Atari VCS, very similar. I mean, they really were stealing the copy but look at this this beautiful IndyCar Formula One car sort of hybrid there for, for auto racing I mean, and then look at the game <laughs> look at the game it's not quite the same is it and look at the look at the boxing game I mean I like realism but that one's just just a little bit blocky a little bit blocky uh, let's keep going we've got chess uh, so I, you know I get a bit obsessed by brochures in games I love it look at these honeys Royal Dealer now this is one sexy card game. Look at those ladies. You're playing the ladies. I don't think they take any clothes off. It's not one of those games. Uh, but still nice. Nice to see. <laughs> nice to, still nice to see uh, women represented in, <laughs> in early video games. <laughs> That's <it's> sexist. <laughs> Have I offended you already? So early on. 20 games. 20 games that are going to offend you a lot worse than this. Anyway, yeah. These games are incredibly dull, aren't they? Um, yeah, anyway, in Television Game Club uh, advert there. You can join the In Television Game Club. Your In Television Club newsletters keep you up to date on tournaments, on playing tips, exciting new games, and a lot more. Take advantage of special offers, receive a wallet, membership card. <laughs> they added the word wallet, uh, but it's just a membership card. It's, it's no free wallet. Is it? I'm thinking, oh, a free what? No. Uh, and a handsome, this is literally what it says, and a handsome. Uh, membership certificate uh handsome i've seen a lot of certificates in my time i don't think i've ever thought of them as handsome uh, but maybe maybe i will uh, anyway it's a it's a kind of programming programming hybrid kind of software title so you have to you basically learn some basic programming techniques um, using the television keyboard uh, and as such that's why it's so rare, because nobody had the keyboard. 
Uh, nobody bought it. Uh, especially this is a this is a UK PAL. I'm sure it's a UK PAL. Which, uh, oh, it's hard to get back in the box. Oh, I might just uh, put that there. Uh, and I'm keeping this to myself, but you can see it's completely missing the bottom flap. <laughs> but apart from that, it's got the top flap. It's got the top flap. Uh, apart from that, it's lovely. But yeah, uh, one game down, twenty to get. Not twenty. Nineteen to go. You can't do maths. It's not 21 games. 20. What a plum. Uh, let's do something else a bit serious. And this is it's a bit dusty. Hang on. Let me get rid of the cobwebs. This is uh, Tricky Tutorials. Now this is for the Atari 800 series. And the, the Atari 800, we haven't really talked about that at all yet on the show. Uh, hugely brilliant 48k computer. Uh, really early, came out pre-64, I'm sure it came out before the Commodore 64, but it was so powerful. Um, a bit of fluff uh, Anyway, Atari 800. Uh, very expensive in the UK, I think it was about £700 for the console. Um, and as such, the software sold very little, and you can see this is a mega, look at this, educational set, sure. Uh, tricky tutorial, teach you the basics of programming, animation. Um, display it's uh, it's learning how to program, but uh, multi-coloured cassettes, beautiful uh, manual and a ring binder. Uh, I think there's even the I think the software's here somewhere. Where is it? Um, oh, where's the soft? Oh, where's the software? It's on the cassettes, you div. <laughs> I was looking for a disc. I don't know why. Don't know why. Anyway, that's a quick one. Tricky tutorials. I just think I love anything that's got this huge girth to it. <laughs> it's one hell of a big. Uh, package. <laughs> I said I was going to be offensive, didn't I? I warned you. I warned you. Uh, get over yourselves. Uh, get all the big ones out of the way. Here's a, is another classic game, and this really is it. And they're a proper game this time. And that is this. And this is David Crane's Little Computer People, uh, which I think going back to the early days, <laughs> Tamagotchi. Can we say? If it wasn't for, t for, for, for little computer people on the Commodore 64 and the Spectrum, that um, Tamagotchis would never have come out. I might be pushing it a bit because this is a bit better than your average Tamagotchi. Let's have a look. So you got, this is the disc version. Um, and uh, the rumour has it, and I don't really know this for sure, if it's just random when you start, but every copy of the game had an individual person in it to look after. The game is like a, looking after a little man in a house or a lady. Um, and every copy of the game had a different person, so encouraging people to buy multiple copies of the game. I would argue that actually the game, it gives you a random character at the beginning and self-saves, so that you are then stuck with that character. Um, it's very clever. So every actual copy of the game is the same, um, but once you've played it, maybe it sets the character up. I, I don't, you guys all know this. You can you can write to me about it. Right? Nobody ever writes to me, do they? Come on, write. Why don't you guys write to me more? We can cover some. Why don't you send me pictures of your collection? Um, I was thinking of this. Why don't you send me photos of you and your partner if you're both gamers? Because let's be honest, there's a lot of us guys we're stuck with partners who really don't understand our hobby. <laughs> the retro gaming is a bit niche, and the likelihood of us finding a, a partner who actually appreciates what we do. I mean, they'll put up with it, yes. A lot of them will put up with it. Um, but to, to find what, to find a couple where they both collect, and I, I do believe one of my favourite channels, Retro Bears channel, I do believe him and his wife, girlfriend, I'm not sure, uh, both collect individually. Oh, how mega is that? Can you imagine? Can you imagine talking about old retro stuff with your... I mean, this is just me. Maybe all you guys are settled down with fellow retro gamers. You know, um, I I do think it'd be a lot easier if you were gay, <laughs> because I think this is a bit of a boy thing. I mean, it's got to be more boy. I'm not saying there isn't girl retro gamers. We've got plenty on the books, girl retro gamers. But I would say more likely to have that in connection when you meet someone as two boys than as a boy girl couple. I don't know. I mean, I'm, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's one of the few times I wish I was gay because would be brilliant, wouldn't it? You just have so much time just playing games all the time. Uh, if you're in a gay couple and you are just having the best life and, and laughing at all us poor gamers who are trying to have to, you know, do other stuff 
uh, to appease, you know, hiding stuff coming through the door. This is a lot of a lot of my customers, right? And they say, "Can you send this on a Wednesday because it comes to Thursday and that's the day that the wife's not here?" Or that's you know, unfortunately, we're just in that position where we have to be a bit sneaky, sneaky retro gamers. But I'm with you. I'm on your side, and we will always, we will always try and accommodate your uh, parcel needs if you need it. You know, special. I could like you know. Put it in a toaster box. Oh yeah, because okay. I think I've ordered a toaster. Oh, you know, stuff like that. I'm gonna do that. Anyway, I really have digressed, haven't I? I was talking about a little computer, and I wanted to show you this because it's got this original, the disc version, has got such a great book about it. Um, it's got all about how you make the game. Note from the publisher. Uh, it's got the history. Uh, it's just, it's just. Uh, I don't know. Look at that. There's that's your house you have in the game, um, and this is where he lives. And I don't know if you've played Little Computer People, there's a part where he sits in the chair. This will be the chair here. Um, and you can press a button and you make a little hand come out from the wall and rub his head. And he's sort of like, oh, mm, mm, oh, oh, like a cat. <laughs> I always like that. It's like, oh, get him in the chair, get him in the chair. And one of the best things about Little Computer Bill is when he knocks on the screen. <laughs> if you don't remember, if you don't know that, let me show you what it's like. <laughs> adorable, isn't it? Isn't that adorable? Uh, wonderful, wonderful game. And... Uh, yeah, and there's David Crane, and look at it. He looks a bit like me. Yeah, he looks a bit like me back in the 90s there, but that's in the 80s. David Crane, of course, the legend who created Pitfall. You know Pitfall. Uh, Boy and, and his blob on the nest, you know. Uh, there's loads of them. Midnight Madness, I think he did that. Oh, it's all coming to me, it's all coming to me. Let's move on, Jace. That's Commodore 64 disc. What else have you got in the box? Let's carry on with Commodore, and here is a game. It's a game for the Commodore Amiga, and I, it's called Mafdet. Mafdet, I think it's Egyptian. It's an Egyptian thing. <laughs> I just think this is... You know, I love the design of old games, and I just love the look of this. And it's not because there's a bit of cleavage on the show, but look at this lady. <laughs> look at her, look at her. Her legs are strange, aren't they? Strange uh, legs, and then a bit of... A bit of uh, it reminds me of something. That, that reminds me of something. What am, I, what am I thinking of? Oh yeah. Anyway, yeah, Math Debt. Uh, you can see it's a, it's a it's a very cool <laughs> Egyptian. It is a fighting, a, a walking along battle game, I think. Um, I just like the look of it. Just like the look of it. It's unusual, isn't it? It's an unusual title. Software Horizons. Uh, there's, Matt, there's the disc. <laughs> Anybody actually get excited about the look of a disc? <laughs> maybe, maybe not one that's just been printed on. Uh, and this is the manual. Uh, and yeah, it's very, it's very, uh, it's very foreign. It's uh, not in English at all. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. It is. Uh, let's show we have it. <coughs> it's Jace's story time. Uh, Welcome to Math Debt, an absorbing adventure with sword fighting and a series of intriguing puzzles to solve as you move through the vast playing area. The scene is set in Egyptian mythology and you are Mafdet, the cat goddess of revenge. <laughs> There's not enough games, films, TV shows about Mafdet. So I just thought I'd bring that to your attention. Okay? And if anyone says, have you ever heard of Mafdet? You can now say, ah, oh, rings a bell. Shut up! I haven't stood up today. Okay, let's carry on. Um, what about this? Hostages. Do you remember Hostages? This is for the, uh, this, oh, you'd think I was going to get a BBC game, I'm not. This game came out for so many formats. It came out for Commodore, Amiga, it came out for Spectrum, C64, Amstrad. But it also came out for the BBC, MSX, and this, the Acorn Archimedes. I just want to get an Archimedes game on the show. <laughs> There's an Archimedes game. Uh, we've got everything, <laughs> included Archimedes. Archie, that's what people call it for short, the Archie. A3000 wrist space processor, Acorn's last big hurrah. Uh, we saw the company off, really. Um, oh, look, there it is in the disc, a little plastic bag, beautiful condition. 
um, published by Superior. Every, every game <laughs> that got a BBC version seems to have been published by Superior. They had all their fingers in all the acorn pies. Mmm, <laughs> fancy an acorn pie now. Sticking with the BBC, what about this? Motorist log. <laughs> it's not about being getting caught out before the services. Uh, this is uh, motorist log. This is a weird, a weird software title. Um, you can see it's just uh, got the manual there in the book. It's standard kind of official uh, BBC Soft uh, packaging. Uh, let me tell you, let me tell you about this game. Well, a game, it's not a game. Motorist Log has three aims. Uh, to help you keep tabs on the cost of owning and running your car. Uh, to help you keep an eye on fuel consumption and tyre wear. To forewarn you when regular expenses are looming up. You can use it whether you drive a brand new car or an old banger. Cheers, mate. Uh, and you can keep separate logs on each car if you want to run more than one. It's not the most dull. What? You... If you, if you're an older person, <laughs> and you had this in the eight, if you logged your car details on your computer with software like this, then then you probably won't be watching because this. <laughs> This is not boring enough for you. It's got too many games and stuff. I don't want to do serious stuff. Uh, let's carry on. Uh, here's a nasty game. Nasty. A bit nasty. This is uh, Dye's Baby. Dye's Baby by Bad Taste Software. Uh, for the Commodore 64 cassette. Now, Dye's Baby is actually referring to Lady Diana. Can you believe it? Uh, before she died, obviously. It's in lovely condition, this one. It's got a bit of a... Uh, focus, man, focus. Uh, a good inlay. Yeah. Uh, but let me just read from the back this sick piece of software, which that's not the reason I'm talking about, I'm just bringing it to your attention. Uh, Charles and Di want another baby. Can you help them? Five games in one guide you through from coping with William to the delivery of number two. That's Prince Harry to you. On the way, you have to deal with upturned potties, low-flying nappies, press photographers, and the dash to the hospital. High-speed arcade action game, full-colour graphics, music, keyboard... Let's show you what this looks like. What a blatant cash-in on the royal family. Uh, and there is a picture on this, and there is the reason I brought it out today, because there is a picture of our new king on here. Uh, this is nothing to do with me, it services to retro games. This is just, this exists. And I thought I would show you. There, you see, that is, that is our King Charles. King Charles. Uh, on that, by Bad Taste Software, uh, regretfully Brent's dies, baby. I just thought, interesting game. Let's carry on. Any more Commodore? No, let's move away from Commodore. What about this? Atari VCS! Yes, Atari fans. I know you're missing out. This is a rare one. Uh, this is ZTAC Bomb. Uh, by OnBase. OnBase. I'm pretending I didn't just read that off the back. <laughs> I can't remember. Oh, I love it. I love the design of this. It's quite unlike. There's a lot of rare, obscure Atari VCS stuff, all highly prized. Rightly so. And this has got a die cut sleeve. And look, 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 this is unusual. Oh. You see, the ma yes, holes in the sleeve. Isn't that lovely? It's in lovely condition. Remember how old this stuff is. Uh, and look at the, look at the cartridge. 1983. Oh, get it out there. Uh, just called Bomb. Bomb. By Z what was it? What was it Zed? Maybe it's called ZTAC. <laughs> it looks like it's called ZTAC. Maybe it's not called the Bomb at all. Um, and here we go, there's a bit of instructions. Instruction card. Uh, oh, what? We don't care how many scores you got. We didn't care. What did you do that for? Oh. Oh, they wrote the scores on the manual. But anyway, apart from that, isn't that a lovely thing? ZTAC. Um, if I can find some footage of it, because I'm not playing this one, uh, I'll put it up now. Oh! Oh, I do like Atari. Yeah, that was good, wasn't it? Wasn't that a good game? Was it the game? <laughs> have you just picked any... you just picked any game, which I know. <laughs> you have, and that wasn't... You're tricking me in the edit! You're tricking me in the edit! I wanted to see Bomb! And you've shown me that! Whatever that is! I can't tell you what it is because I can't see it, can I? I'm pretending. It's all pretending. <laughs> I don't want to ruin the magic of the show. 
uh, but there's a bit of pretending uh, when the edit comes. <sighs> Relax, Chase. I need to calm down again. Get overexcited. Yeah, feel better now. Okie dokie, what have we got? Now this is something really unusual. I love to show you stuff like this. Uh, this is a game for the RCA Studio One console. What? The RCA Studio One console only ever came out in the USA by the company RCA, more known for releasing records. More known for being Elvis Presley's record label. <laughs> but they made a games console during the big console rush. I think it's 1976 the console came out. What does it look like? This is what it looks like. Now I, I have had I had one in my own collection. I don't know if I've still got it. The collection's too big. Uh, the weird thing about this console, it has no TV out. It has no TV out. The TV out socket. <laughs> it's so bizarre. The TV out is on the power supply. So you plug the power supply in and you have to plug the TV cable into the power supply. Very strange thing. Anyway, this is Space War uh, for the RCA Studio 2. Uh, I don't know if there's a Studio 1. A radio RCA Studio 1. You can see that. It's actually that orange. Oh, I'm going to have to just pull up. Let's just pull up an Elvis LP record label. Thank you. You can see. It's very similar style, isn't it? <laughs> you know what I'm going to say about this game? <laughs> Return to Sender. <laughs> oh, that was a joke! It was a bloody joke! Anyway, beautiful, beautiful, super rare game. I'm not sure anyone's ever going to buy it because nobody's got the console, have they? You haven't even seen it before. You don't know what it is. Unless you're proper hardcore. But some of you guys will be. You'll know what the last Studio 2 is. Uh, let's carry on. Uh, let's go to something different. Now, this is a Bimani Pocket. Now, Bimani Pocket, these are, in Japan, the, the Bimani games. Uh, you know, you think Dance Dance Revolution, but the DJ ones, you know, all that B Marnie games, uh, Guitar Heroes, was it? Not Guitar Hero, Guitar Freaks, all those, loads of music games. They swept the arcades, massive in Japan. Well, they made little handheld versions of them, and this is one. Uh, there's loads of different ones, they're super, super rare. Um, and they actually have a headphone socket, they play stereo sound. They're the same thing where you have to press the buttons as the bars drop down. Let's just show you a Bimani game. You see that? So you have to just trigger the right button with the right thing. That's the same as guitar. Uh, but you've got the old twisty, there's the old twisty bit for that was my mouth. <laughs> I'm gonna do it again. I'm, oh. I don't get paid for this. Remember that. It's all free. Uh, anyway, just thought I'd show you that. I'm not gonna take out of the box. Absolutely minting. Oh, it slides open. It slides open. Let's have a look. Yes, you can see it's all fuzzy pink. Fuzzy pink. Beautiful. Uh, it's got batteries in it. Will it turn on? Uh, is that, there, there's the headphone socket. I told you. I told you I had a headphone socket. Uh, um, what a wicked looking game. This version, what's this one called? It's called Uawakai. Why? I mean, that's a C. That's got to be a C, isn't it? Kawaii. Kawaii. Well, Kawaii is Japanese for cute, because you know, I know a bit of Japanese. Um, but I don't think that's. I don't think, maybe it's just called cute. Maybe it's called cute. I suppose actually there is a little. This little. little can you see there's like a little funny, it's a funny man with a hat on, so maybe he's just cute. Uh, I'd imagine it's some sort of Japanese TV show. And there's the headphones, came with the headphones. Uh, they're pink, pink head, pink headphones. Uh, they're, just a re they're just really amazing things that we didn't get. Uh, but Japan gets all the best stuff. We get all the junk. Um, oh, how the heck did that bit go in there? How, where was that piece of plastic? Why did I do this? Why did I get it out? I said I wouldn't, and then I did. Oh. Hang on, just in a power switch, I'm going to try it. No. Oh no, there's a volume switch. Oh, I got you excited then, didn't I? No, I don't. I think that's the batteries that came in it. I think it. Yeah. Anyway. 
Right, I'll put that away later. Let's move on! What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in the box? I'm not bored of it. Um, ENS, Nintendo NES, Nintendo Enter Entertainment System. Yes, and this is one of my all time favourite games from the coin op. And that is Road Blasters. Yeah, Road Blasters. Not for the British, not for the British NES, sadly. It only came out for the American NES. But I, I love Road Blasters because you used to be able to pull off some crazy stunts. Uh, and you can run out of your. I used to love it on Atari Lynx, I loved it on the Spectrum, I loved it in the arcade most though, because you could do like a little spin and then suddenly you've done a full 360 but you're still driving, looking super cool, and all the girls are all around you and they're cheering as you're playing the arcade machine, they're going, yeah, James, James! And as soon as you, when you finally finish your go, when you finish the level, they carry you shoulder high around the arcade going, yeah, yeah, you're the king of the arcades! Uh, uh, I'm sure it happened to you guys. Uh, yeah, it was brilliant days, brilliant days. And that's what Road Blasters means to me. And why did why did they get all the good stuff in America? Well, they, they got all the great games for the NES in America because they bought a lot more NESs than we did in the UK and, and Europe. Uh, let's carry on. What's next in the box? Let's talk about this game. This is a Commodore 64. Again, another Commodore 64. And this game, and I just, <laughs> I just picked it because I don't like the name. It's called Gusher. Yeah. Gusher. And I don't know if, if that relates to something I've been told, uh, but she's a, a bit of a gusher. I, we shouldn't be going rude, but I just think this is a very inappropriate name for a software cassette. Uh, gusher by Visions. I, <laughs> I have visions of a gusher. And I don't <laughs> anyway, let's move on. Let's move on. Keep this uh, P PG. PG. Uh, let's go PlayStation. Here we go. PlayStation. Uh, and this game. And I, earlier I did say it cheekily about the Intellivision keyboard being a bit superfluous. But this is a game that also requires its own controller, and that is this. It's Maestro Music 2 uh, for the Japanese PlayStation 2. Um, beautiful part of the Bimani, you know, going back on about Bimani, 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 a Bimani game again. But this one, very different, uh, because it, uh, it uses this, and I'll just, this is a conductor's baton. Uh, yeah, baton, uh, not Battenberg, that's something else. No, and it, it, you, you basically have to conduct the orchestra. It's like kind of like we, we music, you remember we music? But this is pre-we, this is pre-we. <laughs> it's like me before I do the recording, pre-we. Uh, this is a pre-we motion detected device, pretty amazing. Uh, I think there's three games in the Maestro Music series. We only released in Japan, people don't, didn't really, weren't really bothered, but I just think, wow, a conducting game for the PlayStation 2, how awesome is that? Uh, and you're thinking, mm, yeah, conducting, maybe conducting doesn't really fit with classical, with classical music, classical, does classical music fit with your average gamer? That's probably the problem, it's the juxtaposition of classical music versus contemporary young people playing video games. Uh, maybe not, not not a great match, and that's probably what happened with Nintendo Music by Shigs, Shigzy, Shigzy, Shuguru Mot Miyamoto. Uh, yeah, he made Wii Music. It was meant to be this big success, and it was a massive flop. You all know that, you all know that. Stop talking about the Wii, you're just showing a PlayStation 2 game. Come on, let's try something else. Okay, let's go back to Nintendo. Uh, what about this? This game is called Time Slip. Time Slip for the Super Nintendo. It's a PAL game. Uh, very unusual and you're thinking oh, I don't know that game because most people don't know this game it's quite obscure but it's a blimming good blaster look at it it's a proper good action run and gun uh, shooter but we don't know it it's like what, what, why is this not a massive rarity why isn't this one of the most super rare uh, SNES games ever uh, where's the price uh, there's the price let's more than the price let's see this thing running uh, am I right is this an incredible slice of arcade action that everyone seems to have overlooked. It's, pre it's pretty good, isn't it? It's pretty good. It's pretty good. So, yeah, time slip. Oh, do, not, do, the, do, do the unboxing. Come on, Jace. Oh, look, it's absolutely... That cartridge has never been played. Uh, and the manual, it's not worth singing about, but it is in lovely condition. So, yeah, time slip there. An obscure PAL... Pal, you're, I'm not saying pal, patronise, isn't it? You are right, pal? Yeah, that's like someone's about to punch your face in. Uh, hey, pal! No, pal, 
means it works with British TVs. Mm, 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 cold as that. Cold as that. Getting overexcited again. Oh, yeah, I feel better now. Okay, let's carry on in the box. Sticking with uh, Nintendo, this is a weird one. This is a weird one. This is a Game Boy. This is called Spiritual Welfare. Yes, Spiritual Welfare. It's a Game Boy game uh, for the original Game Boy. Uh, it is a Christian, a Christian release. And as you can see, they've uh, they've made their own. They've made uh, Nintendo wouldn't publish this, <laughs> so they've made their own their own weird cartridge. Uh, there, you can see that. There. Beautiful. Yeah, so it's a very strange game. Now, let me just read this to you. It's got a bit of a, a flyer with it. Uh, I won't read the manual, but I'll read this. Uh, spiritual Warfare. Well, <laughs> spiritual Welfare uh, for play on Game Boy. You play a modern day believer battling the forces of evil. Uh, gather the six pieces of the armour of God to protect yourself from demonic forces. Explore various regions, including a park, a slum, downtown, a housing area, an airport, a shipyard, woods, warehouses and a beach. <laughs> Increase your power by collecting spirit points and talking to friends. Correct answers to Bible questions will also enhance your player strength and fortitude. <laughs> I'm not making that up, that really does say that. Uh, but at the end, as you can see this, available at your favourite Christian retailer. Christian, re only in America folks, Christian retailer. I think you'll struggle to find one of those in the UK. Oh, I just popping down the Christian retailer. <laughs> only in America folks, only in America uh, can they make religion feel like a cult. Uh, yeah, anyway, very strange, very unusual, very rare game. Uh, how much does it cost? Ooh, not sure it's that nice. Uh, no, but it's these rare things. They're rare things for rare people. If you're not a rare person, <laughs> well, actually, we're all rare. We're all individual, we're all unique. That's what my mum used to tell me. Okay, let's carry on. Um, I know what format's next. Spectrum! <laughs> Spectrum! Yeah, Spectrum! Uh, and that is because I'm showing you this. This is a six game compilation. Super, 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 super rare. MIA, maybe, I'm not sure, I can't remember. Uh, Astrocade collection. And who's it by? It's by DDS, not CCS. DDS. Who knew it? There's a CCS, quite famous strategy game company. And then DDS, famous for nothing because this game is so obscure. This is Astrocade. Uh, beautiful, massive, big clam box and yes it's six original games six original titles uh, which you won't find anywhere else and let's show you them uh, they're a bit of a swiss uh, this top one is Simeon very similar to Simon this one Caverns of Dior <laughs> I think that's related to the to the to the fashion people uh, search Caverns for Treasure uh, anyway um, uh, what's the, what else we got? here we've got Bomber uh, Bomber's a death and then we've got uh, Zombie a zombie looks very very uh, boring. Uh, <laughs> Lunar Rover, like a moon buggy sort of game. And the final one, Alien, looks like a Defender ripoff. But they're all original games, and they're all in this weird. Look at the spine of the thing Astrocade. And I, I know why I love it because Bally Astrocade is another console. Uh, and I'll, we'll come to that one day. It's a very weird console released in America. But Astro, Astrocade, everything Astro just sounds so fun and funky. And I think that's because uh, back in the day, probably 1977 to about 1980, the word Astro was just really, really cool and really fun. Uh, so you had Astrocade. Uh, if you went to an arcade, you see all the fruit machines, all the, all the coin pusher games, they'd all be Astro this, Astro that, Astro Warrior, Astrocade. Uh, and it's funny because Astro, all over the arcade, sounds a bit like Ashtray, doesn't it? Astro, Ashtray, I'm just saying, similar. And the funny thing is about an arcade is, uh, you know, if you go in any of the coin slots, you know, a lot of them, they're, they're like Ashtrays, aren't they? <laughs> so it's weird, it's like Astro, Ashtray, Ashtraycade. Uh, you know, if ever you put your 10p in a pinball machine, it went straight through and then you dig it out of the little coin thing. Oh, mum, I've oh, got my hand covered in dog ends. Uh, and that's my experience of arcades, so. Oh, 
Oh, fags! <laughs> oh, nobody smokes anymore, do they? That's really retro. I mean, if you're a retro gamer of smokes, I suppose, you're proper, you're living it, you're living it. But you're not going to be around for long. Uh, here's, a, here's a rare game. Here's a rare game, something else. It's Twin B for the Sharp X68000. Yes, the Sharp X. Look at this. Look at this beautiful. Thing. It's huge. Now, we, we, we did cover in one of the earlier episodes, we talked about the Sharp X68000. This is the Japanese only equivalent. It was the rival to the MSX2. It was a hugely popular computer over there, but never released outside of Japan. Uh, it had loads of great games by Capcom, Konami, loads of. It was their answer to the Amiga and the Atari ST. For God, don't know why the Amiga and ST weren't massive in Japan. They should have been. Uh, but they had this, and that's what they didn't need the ST. So this is their equivalent. This is their 16 bit console. Uh, five and a quarter inch discs rather than three and a halfs. Uh, and let's just show you. We covered Twinbee last week, wasn't it? It was on the Japanese PlayStation. And I showed you it running. I could show you this running. Uh, still, gorgeous, fun. Blaster, cutesy blaster, parodia style, uh, but top down, uh, up the screen and sideways. Uh, breathe, Jake, breathe. Uh, let's have a look. But these, the, look at the, look at this. It's the inner box. Look at this. Such a beautiful thing. It's got like Konami embossed along there, uh, and then open the lid. I mean, it's so unique, unique to the format. This, and here we go. And then we've got the, we've got the discs here. Let's have a look at the discs. Uh, beautiful, like Konami Twinbee discs. So weird to see all this Japanese coolness on five and a quarter inch discs. Uh, to me, it's just it's the juxtaposition. I always associate that look with like Famicom, Super Famicom, uh, even PlayStation, Saturn and stuff. But no, these games predate that. Uh, we've got the instruction card there. And look at this. I don't want to get too excited, but it's a postcard book. It's a book full of postcards of artwork from the game. How amazing is that? And yes, nobody has still no, still none of you have sent me any game related postcards. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. It's going to happen. Uh, there's a whole bunch in this game if you want to send them out. <laughs> it might be an expensive way to buy your postcards, but what a lovely, lovely, huge, huge, chunky, beautiful game. I just love that. Yeah, Twin Beat for the Sharp X68000. What else is in the box? What's in the box? Not many left now. Three things left. Three things. Uh, don't go crazy. And the first one is this. And I had to show you this. <laughs> it's been in stock for a while. It's... <laughs> I'll put it on the screen. Uh, it is, yes, a, an original. No, no, not remade. The original Debrec stylophone musical instrument. It's in our electronics games toy section. Uh, but it's a proper one with old style 1970s Rolf Harris, legendary paedophile on the box. There he is. Uh, we miss you, Rolf. We miss you. Why did you have to be such a creepy git? Uh, yeah, no. I, mean, I, I don't, don't know. Calling him a git might be a little bit underplaying it. Maybe he's a bit worse than that. Uh, yeah. Uh, anyway, forgetting about Rolf, the Dubrex stylophone, one hell of a musical instrument. Uh, and I'm going to have a little play of it in a minute to show you. But look, this is a white one. It's beautiful. Uh, you know, they, they're just so... They, I mean, we're into this stuff with the retro aesthetic a lot of the time. And you don't get more retro looking than this. We've got the... Uh, yeah, just a bit of a... I'll have a go with that in a minute. And uh, yeah, well, I'll actually have a go with it now. Now, viewers, if you can just clear your mind, relax, uh, get yourself in a nice peaceful zone for the sounds of an original 1970s stylophone. And there we have the uh, retro games theme there on the original stylophone. So there you have it then, that is the uh, classic Stylophone. I just thought I'd have to show you that. Uh, <laughs> I, I just, I know, I know. It shouldn't be showing it because it's got Rolf on it, but it was of the time, and it's very retro. And let's be honest, uh, a lot of those awful paedophile guys are kind of 
tied up with our retro past, aren't they? Because we watch them on telly all the time. Um, sad, sad, but true. Now I'm going to finish off with a couple of electronic games. You know I'm mad on electronic games and tabletops. Uh, and these are beautiful. And these are different again. When we looked at the Galaxy Invader last week. But what about these? Now these are Konami. No, ba Konami. Bandai. Bandai tabletops. Uh, we've got Block Out here with a s pretending to be analog kind of spinner there for like a breakout sort of game. And we've got Moon Alien, uh, which is also called something else. The same game gets called Galaxian. Yes, it gets called Galaxian, uh, which is why I was getting confused with Konami. Was I? Yeah, anyway, Moon Alien, Block Out. I'm not going to waste the time showing you how brilliant. Well, I will, I will show you under the camera. You can see a beautiful, smooth, curved design. Uh, and there's the blue one. Beautiful things, uh, but let's show you what they play like. Uh, and here we have a moon alien. Yes, moon alien. A lovely thing. Uh, got the instructions there on the back. Sometimes, as I said, sometimes known as Galaxian, um, moon alien. Who knows, maybe there are aliens on the moon, um, because I'm not sure. Well, the jury's still out. Did we ever go to the moon? Uh, we don't know. Uh, let's press the button, let's see what it sounds like. It sounds like Galaxian straight away, doesn't it? Oh, look at the graphics on this! I'm straight in the action, aren't I? Oh. Right, let, let's see. This is just to show you it running. I'm going to play it in a sec. Alright! Yeah, nice. Okay, right, let's do this. Turn it off and then we're going to start again. Still thinks I'm dead. Oh, reset. Oh my god, that's fast. Oh, come off it. <laughs> Suddenly. Okay. What? They are so fast. This is one zippy game. I am playing it with the camera in between me and the game. I'm just going to adjust it. Oh! I think that's blimmin' challenging. I think it's pretty awesome. Uh, a, lot be a lot better and faster than I remembered. Wow, Moon Alien, amazing. Here we have Block Out. Uh, block Out. Uh, something we all like to do, block people out. Oh, uh, Oh, look, that is pretty neat. So, this is a proper breakout game. Here's the ball, here's the ball. Oh. This is nice, an LED... Oh, no, I I can't play it. It's sort of off screen. Oh, here we go. Oh yeah, now it looks like you can play. Yes! Straight up, we're going to get to the top layer. If I hit it on the... I should get the angle. Yes, it's working. Yes! I can... Why couldn't I play it the first time? Yeah. These games are pretty cool. Well done, Bandai. They're pretty awesome. You know, I'd have loved this in the 80s. Uh, yeah, so, Block Out. Beautiful, lovely, groovy Bandai tabletop. Yeah! So, yeah, there you've got to see some handheld games in action. I think we've done it a little bit quicker this week. I'm trying to get this back down to about 45 minutes. Um, some hope. Next week, I promise we will be listing loads more great, exciting new stuff on the site, and we'll go back to the proper end of the show with all the new stuff, get you excited about all the new stuff on the site. Uh, but for this week, I think that's about it. Keep on retro gaming, retro gamers! Favourite condiment? That is a good question. I keep firing these questions in for the end of the show. Favourite condiment? Salad cream. <laughs>